It's kind of almost, I think, sort of a generational curse in my family is anxiety. And uh, it's something I've wrestled with my whole life long, and I've seen it taken up in my biological children, at least, the two older ones. And, and uh, uh, so I appreciate that. I appreciate it. Uh, good word. Uh, also, you know, one of the texts you references is that you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And that ties together in that that was partial uh, text of my last message in Oregon last Sunday. And it was also the verse that Ted, as he was dying, um, said, this is the verse I want to kind of leave the world with and to be presented at my memorial service and for people to dwell upon. And it's on the, bullet, the, the, the flyer that went out uh, at the remembrance celebration that was here yesterday afternoon. Um, was, you know, he was asked, what's the greatest commandment? He says, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second is like it, to love your neighbors yourself. And then Jesus said, basically, you know, on, all, on those two things depend all the rest of the law and the prophets. If we do those two things, we're, we're, doing, it, we're doing it all, we're doing it right. And so um, that transition with, with what, what Ted had said and left. Um, and what was interesting as well to remember the service yesterday is that you know, some people shared memories of when he was young, others when he was older. And so you had these faith stories about the man of God and, and a grandson who was just speaking about how he was the one in the family that gave him the legacy of faith to be a man of God in his family. And then somebody else would talk about him, you know, drinking a six-pack in his pickup and throwing cigarettes into the back of a truck that had dynamite in it. And, you know, I mean, just throwing them out, you know, it, it could go in. It was like, you know, it's like, wait a minute, those don't really kind of fit. Well, they, they do in terms of a lifetime. You know, I came to Jesus at 21, and people tell stories any time before that. And I was one messed up, uh, reckless individual. Um, <laughs> And so I met Ted when he was 61 years old, and I kind of thought he was an older man. And now I'm only a couple years from that now. You know, I came here, and I came here to, to pastor and shepherd this church in 1991, and we left here in 2012, 21 years later. And uh, we went to San Diego uh, to be involved in urban ministry. It was really the whole call of God in our heart. And uh, to be in the midst of a... A uh, dense population and, and just lots of people and hurting people and and uh, and, to, and to be involved in a church plant effort and uh, I'm not so much I'm not so sure I think God had a lot of reasons why He took us there We grew and learned a lot We really didn't leave behind the church We left behind a, uh, a handful of people that we had gathered and then we began to work with a, another pastor using the same rented facility It was a, a community center. Um, and uh, so we just kind of handed off people to him, and I sort of met with him and negotiated myself out of a job uh, because we were this newer and smaller entity, and so we were just going to be absorbed into his, and, and I, would, I would be out of any uh, position, you know. And so we began to seek the Lord again, where and had been prior to that for some months. Well, we believe you're calling us away again where we're going to go, and... And uh, so we thought, again, it was urban ministry, and it was going to be somewhere in the northwest, and God was leading us all over the place, all over Oregon, mostly, a little bit in northern California, southern Washington, but all over the state of Oregon. And, uh, and I'll, I'll try to keep this brief, but it, it's a cool part of the story that uh, I, had, I, had, I had sent a bunch of paperwork to a, to a church in, in Vancouver, Washington, and... Uh, when, when that was submitted, it was in the same network of churches as this church in Coquille, Oregon. And so they saw my whole packet and said, man, this guy looks perfect for us, you know. And so they, they called me and they reached out to me. I didn't reach out to them. And it's interesting because same with Stevensville, Montana. When we were coming here from Portland, Oregon, when I, when I was in seminary at Multnomah, um, you know, I had made overtures to a number of churches and nothing happened. And then Stevensville, Montana, Jesus Community Church reached out, reached out to us. And said, you know, and, and it clearly just looked like it was a perfect fit, and, and, and we were here in a very short time. So anyway, Coquille reaches out to me and says, they said, um, you know, if you, we know that you want an urban ministry, would you consider, you know, a small town like Coquille, Oregon? And man, I, without hesitation, said no. Um, you know, we, we feel that God's called us to the city, and, and, you know, where all the pain and the hurt is, and, 
And uh, I said, no. And then months later, it's very peculiar, months later, maybe three months later, I'm lying in bed on a Saturday night, and I'm praying, God, where are you going to send us? Where are we going to go? And I was, again, just so ready and somewhat anxious, you know, in that sense of, oh, let's, let's do this thing. I'm ready to go. And, and, I, and, and this you know, coquille flashed through my mind. And at that point, it wasn't like, go to Coquille. It was, wait a minute, Coquille? Is that the same place that my best friend, who's still my only close, forever, lifelong friend from our years in San, in San, Francisco, San Diego, uh, Steve Pay, he's a pastor there, uh, that he mentioned that he inherited some land in a little town in Oregon, and he might be moving there in the future. And is, is, is Coquille, is, uh, is, are, they, are they the same place? I had not put the two together, though I'd heard them both within days of each other, months before. And so Coquille, God said. And so the next morning, like, we came to church. We, at that time, we merged with Steve. And I said, Steve, what's the name of that little town in Oregon where you just inherited some land? He said, Coquille. I said, oh, my gosh. I said, Lord, I must repent of, of excluding, you know. And it really, Michelle and I had already kind of come to this in those intervening months as well. In terms of, of uh, I didn't feel like I put God in a box by saying city only, but I know that, that in a sense I had. I'd, res I'd, I'd restricted, Lord, where do you want us to go, right? And so we had kind of already repented of that. And I heard Coquille, and I go, wow, that's just too much. And so um, I wrote him back and said, if you don't mind, you know, a flip-flopper, um, and, and uh, I called myself something else, too, you know. Um, uh, you know, uh, it, it, then I would actually like to, to take up this conversation. And it's almost as if nothing had happened in those three months, because they wrote right back and said, can we talk to you on the phone tonight? And, and so we were traveling, and we were, just, we were in a hotel in Salt Lake City, and I get on the phone, and there was 12 on their search team. 13, it's huge. Anyway, they had a conference call, and I was sitting there in our hotel bed, and we're having this talk with, with the folks there in Coquille, Oregon. And, it's, and again, it was just when God put this together, it was obvious, and this was as well. And so we went and met with them and, and did all the things. It was a much more formal process than, than was here in, in 91. But anyway, uh, so now we've been there. It'll be a year on the 1st of November. Um, it's a little town of Coquille, Oregon. It's near Coos Bay. Uh, and near Bandon, um, two coastal cities were just, uh, you know, maybe 10 miles inland from the, both of those two places. Uh, Bandon is one of those quintessentially beautiful, stunning Oregon coastlines. Um, and Coos Bay gives us a little bit of shopping because it's, we're not isolated because it's a little bit, it's the largest town on the Oregon coast. And a little piece of trivia, it's the largest bay between San Francisco and Seattle, you know? It's the largest West Coast Pacific Bay. But, um, uh, so anyway, uh, we love it there. We love everything about it. The people are amazing. Uh, it's a very healthy church that we've inherited. Um, and, uh, uh, and yet, you know, I mean, so we're already discovering some areas of non-health, even as we do in our own selves, right? And actually the one issue we're in the midst of, like when you talked about peace, one of the troubles I thought of, is that just recently we've discovered there's, you know, among this group of maybe 150 people there, we've discovered two who are, you know, sowing seeds of discord. And, and something I take really, really, really seriously. There's nothing that really damages particularly innocent sheep more than division and and grumbling and discord and so forth, but um, but it's uh, uh, it's a wonderful place for us to be. I know that God definitely wanted to shake things up. It's kind of one of the reasons why He moves people around because when the pastor left, he left. It was good. It was great, and, and he went off to do something else. Well, then I come there. Well, why didn't he just stay there, right? Well, one thing God wants to stir us up because one of the things that countless people have told us is that. Myself and the previous pastor could not be more different than any two human beings on the planet. All right? And so that shakes people up, right? Change. I mean, that's the definition of change. And so, um, uh, and, and many of those, particularly the elders that I serve together with as a fellow elder, just go, man, you know, it, it, this is, this is uh, what 
what is needed here. What, 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 what you bring, what, what the Spirit of God brings in and through you and your family, your wife and, and our children, um, they, they, they recognize God's good hand in it. Um, so, uh, you know, our time here, this is my first church, and really at points when we were 20 years into it, it looked like maybe this would be my only, because it was great. It was hard to leave here. Ministry was great. Everything was great. Relationships were great. But when God says go, you got to obey. As I said 21 years ago, we didn't want to find out what a western Montana version of the belly of a big fish was. <laughs> so um, we went to, you know, the big, dirty, crowded, traffic-filled city for a period of time and, and, and loved it there indeed and uh, thrived there. Um, one of the things you said as far as God's provision, one is, is I think if you are where God wants you to be, you'll be at peace. And, you know, we, we've lived in cities, we lived in Berlin, Germany, Portland, Oregon, San Diego, California, loved it while we were there, thrived there. We've been in small, we grew up mostly in small towns, we served here in Stevensville all those years, and, and now we're in Cook Hill, and, and it's like we, we, we love it, we're at home there. Um, so God suits you where you need to go, but also go where God calls you. You know, some of you here, God, God wants to, to do things maybe you've never even considered yet in terms of, of you know, go and make disciples, right? Or while you're going, make disciples to, to, move, to, to move around our commu your community as well as your world and serve Him in, in maybe some ways that it might shock you initially and, or shock others. Because believe me, leaving here and going, choosing to go to a Southern California city, people here, everyone thought we were crazy. Because <laughs> almost a third of the congregation had come from the cities of Southern California. And they said, you are crazy. And when people leave there, they leave there to escape the hell of the city. So why would you want to go to hell? And so, and, or they were people, you know, that, that came from small town Iowa and just found, you know, small town Montana is amazing. And why would anybody not want to live here and leave here? And, and, uh, and so, or this is all you ever knew. And why would, and, and, and most people's view here of, of any city is just like, yeah, I know. I know people have tempted to move to the big hole because the bitter has gotten too crowded. If I attempted, I mean one winter and they're out. Um, but I mean, one winter and they're out of there because it gets cold sometimes here in bitter, I mean, big old every winter 30 below guaranteed probably 50 below so you can't it'll never be it's one of those places you can safely say we'll never change <laughs> you can't say that about it pretty much anywhere else. Uh, so anyway now I'm just rambling on but it's a joy to be here um, this is a, a, a just an amazing the uh, just strong and rich piece of and part of, of, of our our life and our history and our family. We raised our two youngest kids. They're now in their thirties, and we got grandkids. And we live in Scotland and Salem, and and uh, we came here. They're four and six years old, and and, uh, and of course, you know, Des, you know, he was, he was born here, and so was Nadia. And Nadia couldn't be here. She's nannying for. That's pastor friend of mine's in-laws in Hemet, California, outside of San Diego. She's nannying for them uh, at their home uh, just for the month of October, um, but sadly we was unable to be here with us. But, uh, you know, Pat was saying, she remembers, you know, she used to sit, Desmond, he, Pat used to hold you all the time, man. You were just this, you were just this, this tiny little punk version of, of who you are now. And uh, so he, he, you, he can sit on your lap. You lie. Uh, just don't want to break anybody. Uh, all right, Michelle, do you want to say anything? Just, Desmond, you? Uh, how about Herbert Kreikenbaum? No. <laughs> he, he's our foreign exchange student from Germany, and uh, uh, so we take him with us everywhere we go. Uh, so, yeah. any, any, any questions, real quickly, of us? Anything you guys would, would want to hear? Okay, pray for, yes? What's the name of your church in Coquille? It is Emmanuel Baptist Church. Yeah, yeah. Man, 
Southern Baptist Church. And he had took any time any of you are in that region, that part of the world, you know, we have an open door at our home. Uh, and it is absolutely beautiful. Uh, climate's great. It never, it got under 40 degrees three times last winter and it got over 80 three times this summer. It's really nice and mild. It does rain a lot, but you don't have to shovel rain. 